In this video, I'm going to talk about the derivative of vector function. So, uh, I mentioned in the previous several videos about a, a vector function. We should talk about a function, a vector, which is a function of, a, let's say, a time t, a t, a, fun, a variable of t. So, of course, this t will be, uh, we could have a range starting from uh, t0 and ending at tf. For example, this uh, vector function may represent a curve. Okay. Um, when we talk about the vector derivative, which we, it's kind of related to the, the, the scalar derivative. We all know how to compute a derivative for a scalar function. For example, if I have, a, if I give you a function which is x of t, uh, let's see, is t squared, and we know how to compute a derivative. x dot t, of course, with respect to t, is just a 2 sub t. So vector derivative is also is really straightforward. It just you take the derivative of each individual component of the vector function with respect to whatever variable we use in the vector function. For example, if I have the two the r sub t, which is two d uh, given by x t y sub t, which means we have two entries in the vector function, uh, which are x t and y t. So actually, I can take a, com uh, take a computer derivative of that so vector function, which is just the derivative of each individual component with respect to the variable t. In a similar way, you can also compute the, the double derivative, which is just the, of the vector function, which is the double derivative of the individual uh, of, uh, scalar function with respect to the variable t. Okay. For example, if I give you r sub t, which is vector function of time t of t. So I have the sine t and the cosine t, so you can compute the derivative of that, r sub t, uh, r of t, which is the uh, derivative of sine t of the first entry, d, derivative of sine t with respect to the t. Uh, the second then the second component of my uh, vector derivative will be the derivative of the second component of r sub t, which is cosine t with respect to the t. So if you take a derivative, you see which will be cosine t of the first entry, Second trace with negative sine t. Okay, we can also compute the double derivative of the vector function, uh, the one function I give you, which is just uh, you take one more derivative of your your first derivative of the r sub t, which means I take a derivative of the first one, which is derivative of cosine t with respect to t. The second one will derivative of the negative sine t with respect to dt. So what I have is negative sine t negative cosine. That's my the second order derivative of my R sub t, okay? Alright. Now I'm talking about some physical meaning of this uh, vector, the derivative of vector functions. Um, when we have some physical meaning of this t, R sub t, right? Otherwise, I don't know the physical meaning. If, so this is the assumption we have, assume that this R sub t represents the position, or I will say the location, right? Of object at different time, of course. So the t represents the time, which means if it represent, if you remember in the previous video I talked about, if I say this is my, uh, this is my curve represented by r sub t, and actually this curve represents the location that the object moves along this path at a different time. You can sort of consider what the r sub t r means. Okay, to represent the, tra the position or trajectory of the object as time grows. Okay, now we can take a derivative, right? We take a derivative of that one, which is let's say we represent this uh, derivative as u sub t, which actually has a physical meaning. The physical meaning of r dot t, okay, is the velocity of the object. Which means you can sort of see, oh yeah, the velocity, let's say for this point, your velocity is moving into this direction. You basically can tell that. It's also tangent point of view. The tangent line, basically. The tangent line is actually pointing about the velocity of the object. If my RT represents the position of the object at different time. Okay? You can also take a, a second order derivative of this RT, which will give us the acceleration of the object okay which is again is a vector okay i could i don't know how to draw this one over here because it's a little bit hard to draw that one but what it means is if you take a double derivative you actually get an acceleration okay it's like when you drive a car if i drive a car let's say i'm driving a car along the path okay so i'm gonna I'm, if i take the the first order derivative of the trajectory 
of my uh, car at different times, so I can get a set of velocities uh, for this uh, car at a different time. If I take one more derivative of the velocity with respect to the time, I get acceleration of the car. Okay. The other one is also the uh, when I take the norm of magnitude, a norm of my the r dot, which will give us speed of the object. So this norm is just a scalar. Right? This is a scalar. So it's just one value, which is the speed. So pay attention to the difference between velocity versus speed. So velocity is a vector. So it includes not only the speed, but also the direction that the object is moving. While well, speed only talks about a, a number. So it doesn't talk about direction. Okay. okay, let me give you a very simple example how we actually compute this uh, velocity, acceleration, and speed. Okay, so here assume that I have an object moving along the circle, okay, along the circle, circular path and starting from the point which is one zero and moving counterclockwisely and go back to the starting point. Okay, that's my my R of T. Okay, so R of T is cosine T sine T. So T is equal to zero less than two pi. Okay, that will be the, the circular, the entire circle. Okay. So if I want to compute let's say that's the the where the the trajectory or loc location or position objective of the of the car at a different time. So in order to compute the velocity, so I need to compute the derivative of this S of t, which is already computed over here, cosine t and sine t. This is opposite, of course, it's opposite, right? So cosine t, the first one is cosine t, the second one is sine t. So take a derivative of the first one with respect to t, so I take negative sine t, and take the derivative of the second entry with respect to t, so I got a cosine t. So that's my Velocity. So again, velocity is a, is a vector, it's not a scalar. If I take one more derivative, so I get this r double dot t, which is d negative sine t dt, which is a derivative, one more derivative of the derivative one, this one. So d negative sine t dt, and the second entry will be d cosine t over dt. So I have negative cosine t, negative sine t. That's my acceleration. Okay. And the velocity, I can also compute the velocity, right? The 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 the, sp the speed. We can also compute the speed. When you do the speed, let's say, I do r r t dot speed is just the square root of the negative sine t squared plus cosine t squared. So this will give us square root of uh, one, which is one. So the speed is always one. So velocity is not a one, but the speed is always one. Okay. Of course, I can also compute the the velocity at a particular time, and the uh, the speed at the, so this is the velocity. This is how we can velocity at time zero. Okay. This is the speed. At time zero. Of course, speed doesn't really matter. And this is my acceleration at t equals zero. Okay, you can compute that. Okay, you can also compute the speed. Uh, this is a calculation of the speed. Uh, the not speed. This is, is the velocity at t is pi over two. Okay, what you do is just replace the whatever value I calculate here by the actual t. Okay, when you t replace t by pi over two, you get the r dot pi pi over two. You replace the t by pi over two, you get a negative one to zero. This is my speed, and my, this is my velocity, and this is my speed again. The speed doesn't matter; it's always one. And my acceleration, you just replace whatever we calculated over here. Replace t by pi over two, so I have this acceleration over here. Okay. So that's the physical meaning. Um, again, I want to emphasize that this physical meaning makes sense only if this R sub t represents the position, or you can say location of an object, and t represents the time. Then that's the physical meaning. Uh, when we take the derivative, the double derivative, and we compute the norm of the, the derivative, that represents the velocity, acceleration, and speed.